All right, in this lecture, we are talking about fast Fourier transform. It's a big topic, and in specific, we talk about the theoretical development for fast Fourier transform corresponding to the case where the capital N is equal to 8. And 8 can be represented as 2 raised to the power 3, and therefore the value of R is equal to 3. Now, if you remember, in the previous case, for the theoretical development of FFT, we have developed for the situation where N, capital N, is equal to 2 to the power 2, which is the same thing as 4. Now, we want to make it another case, like 2 raised to the power 3. And hopefully, after this case, then you can begin to see the pattern, OK? Now, for this case, let's say, suppose we're talking about the number of data point capital N is equal to 8, which can be expressed as 2 raised to the power 3. And that implies that the value R is equal to 3 in this case. So now, using the very similar idea that we developed in the previous lecture, which is lecture number 16, we can say that uh, because capital N is equal to 8, therefore the index K and the index N, each of the index K or the index N can go from 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 7. And the reason we can say go up to the value of 7 is because the index can go up to the value of capital N minus 1. So therefore, if N capital N equal to 8, then the index small k and small n can go up to 7. Now, the thing is, the value of the index k, we know it should be somewhere between 0, 1, up to 7. That can be expressed, the k can be expressed by the formula that I mentioned you right here in equation 17, which is k equal to 4k2 plus 2k1 plus k0. Now, according to the previous lecture, if you remember, I told you that I don't like to express like 2k1 plus, 2, uh, plus k0. Instead, I prefer to express like 2 raised to the power 1, k1, plus 2 raised to the power 0, k0, in the previous lecture. So now you can see we can generalize a little bit more, because in this case, the index r is equal to 3. That means you're supposed to have a 3-bit binary number. Compared to the previous case, you have only 2-bit binary number. And therefore, in the previous case, for 2-bit, you just say the index k is equal to 2k1 plus 1k0. Now, you can including an ad additional term, which is 2 raised to the power 2 times k2. And that's why you got this equation here, which is 4k2 plus 2k1 plus k0. I prefer not to show you this equation because if you look at that equation, it may not be easy for you to see why the value of the index k should be expressed like this. I prefer you to show you the index k expressed in this way. So that way you can see the similarity between equation 17 in this chapter that have all three terms Compared to the previous chapter, you only have these two terms. All right. Again, because k0, k1, and k2, they are the binary number. That means the value of k0, k1, and k2 can only be either 0 or 1. So what it means is, by letting the value of k0, k1, and k2 
could be anywhere from 0 to 1, K0, K1, and K2. Then the value of K could be anywhere between 0 and 7. So you can see the value of Ki or Ni. It means like I could be 0 or 1, you know. The value of K and small n could be either 0 or 1. And the reason because K2, K1, K0, N2, N1, N0, they are all binary number. And that's why the value can only be either 0 or 1. So, equation 17 and 18, we define for this chapter corresponding to N equal to 2 to the power 3. is very similar like the previous chapter. Okay, after that, the procedure almost the same as in the previous lecture. Why? Because the formula that you have that you want to compute for C tutor, the vector C tutor, instead of say it is a function of n, now we say it's a function of n2, comma n1, comma n0. Instead of having a formula on the right hand side of equation 19, in the old day, we just say f is a function of k. Now we say f is a function of k2, k1, k0. And in the old day formula, the first parenthesis here corresponding to the small n value. And the next parenthesis corresponding to small k. And now we just replace the value of small n based on the formula which say small n equal to 4n2 plus 2n1 plus n0. As you can see from the previous slide. Where is that? Here. You see? The value of n is equal to 4n2 plus 2n1 plus n0. That's what you did. Right here. Okay? Similarly, the value of k that you have in the earlier formula, now you replace k by 4k2 plus 2k1 plus k0. And now, exactly similar like in the previous chapter, instead of having two summation, now you have three summation corresponding to the index k0. You have a first summation, then you have a summation, the second summation related to the index k1, and then you have the third summation related to the index k2. And then, in exactly the same way like we explained to you earlier, what we want to do is the next step is we say, let's take a carefully look at the term w raised to that power in equation 19. That term w raised to the certain power is shown in equation 19 is exactly this term right here that we are talking. So the next step we can do is we say like this. Very similar derivation like before. We take the first parenthesis, we multiply with 4k2. That will give you the power of that w as shown in the first term on the right hand side. Then we take the same first parenthesis, we multiply with 2k1 that will give you that power right there. And then finally, you take the same first parenthesis, you time k0, that will give you the power of that term right there for w. So, so far, that's what we did. The next step that we do, we will say, okay, for the left-hand side, again, Nothing changed on the left hand side. Left hand side is the same. The left hand side is the same. So what you have now, the left hand side is right here. We rewrite it as here. Okay? And then the only thing different here is we say, we say, let's take. 4n2 times 4k2. That will give you 16n2k2 as a power of w. And then after that, 
we take 2n1 times 4k2. That will give you 8n1 times k2. And then finally, if you take n0 times 4k2, that will give you 4n0k2. So all I did so far is that I say, let me exp expand this term right there, w raised to that power. That term right there that I just circle it is equivalent to the product of these three terms. Okay? And then after that, what did I say? After that, what I can say is I consider 4n2 times 2k1. That will give me 8n2 times k1 right there. And then finally, if you take a look at the term 2n1 plus n0 times 2k1, that will give you exactly this term right there. Okay? And then finally, as you can see, as you can see, the last term, which is this term right here, the last term, that is again so is here. So, all I did to you is I just expand a certain power of W, and that is what I got. Now, the nice way, the nice thing about equation 20 is this. If you look at equation 20, whenever you see the square bracket, like this term right here, the square bracket, W raised to the power 16N2K2, and you have another square bracket term right here, which is W raised to the power 8N1K2, and then you have another square bracket right here, W raised to the power 8N2K1, each end of those bracket there is equal to 1. And therefore, it can sim equation 20 can be simplified a lot. Like for example, this bracket right here is equal to 1. And you can prove it easily by remember the definition of W. And then by remember the so-called Euler identity. Okay, so this term equal to 1, you can prove it by using the definition of W and make use of the Euler identity. We can prove that square bracket, each and every square bracket term, they are all equal to 1. And therefore, equation 20 now becomes simplify and it will be shown in the next slide you see so all you have left in equation 20 is shown in equation 21 okay now as you can see in equation 20 again take a look at 